Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, Wisconsin. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, delegates, and fellow citizens, I am honored by the support of this convention for Vice President of the United States. I accept the duty to help lead our nation out of a jobs crisis and back to prosperity, and I know we can do this. I accept the calling of my generation to give our children the America that was given to us with opportunity for the young and security for the old. And I know that we are ready. Our nominee is sure ready. His whole life, his whole life prepared him for this moment to meet serious challenges in a serious way without excuses and idle words. After four years of getting the runaround, America needs a turnaround, and the man for the job is Governor Mitt Romney. <clears throat> I'm the newcomer to this campaign, so let me share a first impression. is an unexpected turn. It certainly came as news to my family. <laughs> and I'd like you to meet them. My best friend and wife, Jana, our daughter, Liza, and our boys, Charlie and Sam. The kids are happy to see their grandma who lives in Florida. There she is, my mom, Betty. <clears throat> my dad, a small town lawyer, was also named Paul. Until we lost him when I was 16, he was a gentle presence in my life. I'd like to think he'd be proud of me and my sister and brothers. <laughs> you know what? I'm sure proud of him and where I come from, Janesville, Wisconsin. <laughs> I live on the same block where I grew up. We belong to the same parish where I was baptized. Janesville is that kind of place. The people of Wisconsin have been good to me. I've tried to live up to their trust. 
And now, I ask those hardworking men and women and millions like them across America to join our cause and get this country working again. When Governor Romney asked me to join the ticket, I said, let's get this done. And that is exactly what we are going to do. <laughs> President Barack Obama came to office during an economic crisis, as he has reminded us a time or two. <laughs> Those are very tough days. And any fair measure of his record has to take that into account. My home state voted for President Obama. When he talked about change, many people liked the sound of it, especially in Janesville, where we were about to lose a major factory. A lot of guys I went to high school with worked at that GM plant. Right there at that plant, candidate Obama said, I believe that if our government is there to support you, this plant will be here for another hundred years. That's what he said in 2008. Well, as it turned out, that plant didn't last another year. It is locked up and empty to this day. And that's how it is in so many towns, where the recovery that was promised is nowhere in sight. Right now, 23 million men and women are struggling to find work. 23 million people, unemployed or underemployed. Nearly one in six Americans is in poverty. Millions of young Americans have graduated from college during the Obama presidency, ready to use their gifts and get moving in life. Half of them can't find the work they studied for or any work at all. So here's the question. Without a change in leadership, why would the next four years be any different from the last four years? The first troubling sign came with the stimulus. It was President Obama's first and best shot at fixing the economy, at a time when he got, he got everything he wanted under one-party rule. It cost $831 billion, the largest one-time expenditure ever by our federal government. They went to companies like Solyndra with their gold-plated connections, subsidized jobs, and make-believe markets. The stimulus was a case of political patronage, corporate welfare, and cronyism at their worst. <clears throat> you, you, the American people of this country, were cut out of the deal. What did taxpayers get out of the Obama stimulus? More debt. That money wasn't just spent and wasted. It was borrowed, spent, and wasted. <laughs> Maybe the greatest waste of all was time. Here we were, faced with a massive job crisis so deep that if everyone out of work stood in single file, that unemployment line would stretch the length of the entire American continent. You would think that any president, whatever his party, would make job creation and nothing else his first order of economic business. But this president didn't do that. Instead, we got a long, divisive, all or nothing attempt to put the federal government in charge of health care. <clears throat> Obamacare comes to more than 2,000 pages of rules, mandates, taxes, fees, and fines that have no place in a free country.
Kaczynski. That's right. That's right. You know what? The president has declared that the debate over government-controlled health care is over. That will come as news to the millions of Americans who will elect Mitt Romney so we can repeal Obamacare. And the biggest, coldest power play of all in Obamacare came at the expense of the elderly. You see, even with all the hidden taxes to pay for the health care takeover, even with the new law and new taxes on nearly a million small businesses, the planners in Washington still didn't have enough money. They needed more. They needed hundreds of billions more. So they just took it all away from Medicare. $716 billion funneled out of Medicare by President Obama. An obligation we have to our parents and grandparents is being sacrificed, all to pay for a new entitlement we didn't even ask for. The greatest threat to Medicare is Obamacare, and we're going to stop it. In Congress, when they take out the heavy books and the wall charts about Medicare, my thoughts go back to a house on Garfield Street in Janesville. My wonderful grandma, Janet, had Alzheimer's, and she moved in with mom and me. Though she felt lost at times, we did all the little things that made her feel loved. We had help from Medicare, and it was there, just like it's there for my mom today. Medicare is a promise, and we will honor it. A Romney-Ryan administration will protect and strengthen Medicare for my mom's generation, for my generation, and for my kids and yours. so our opponents can consider themselves on notice. In this election, on